right say, formation. It wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't in the right time period for that. And you'll take the blame for everything, but it wasn't the right formation for those certain plays. This was, mm -hmm. it worked out perfect. I'm not going to sit here and fault Andy for anything. These people that called him a washed up old man that he oh, was yeah. a stubborn people person. Were saying, and people were saying because his son caused all those issues that he should be fired. I'm like, look, you cannot fault him for what someone else did. He had no, con he had no control of the situation. So people need to leave Andy alone. Yeah, man, they were saying he couldn't coach. They think he's lost. It. He's not a good clock management. Well, obviously he showed some stuff tonight. So I wonder where all these it. saints came from, bro. That's what I want to know. I want to know where all these people with the halos hanging over their head came from. I want to know how they grew up in these perfect households that everything was so great in their family and they've never had a problem. That's what I want to know. Where did all these people, dude, I lived in Kansas City for 43 years. I don't mm -hmm. know one person that was perfect. I don't know one person's family that was perfect. So all these motherfuckers talking all this shit about how their families are perfect. And Andy reads a big piece of shit because he, his kids had problems. Man, everybody's kids have problems. At some point or another, there's got to be somebody in some in every family that has an issue. Mine has it. Everybody has it. So don't tell me that you guys are out there preaching on Twitter. Oh well, this guy. I mean, I mean, he just did it wrong. He, you know, he was a terrible father. He just, you know, he just. Made it, but there was something. He did something wrong. Why does somebody have to do something wrong for their kid to turn out wrong? No. It's not like that. You can teach. I'm a parent. You can teach your kid anything you want to teach them. You can preach. You can do whatever you want. They are mm -hmm. going to turn out however they want to turn out. You got a right road and a left road. Depends on which one you want to take. You people and make. I just brought. Mm -hmm. They make that decision. You can't put it on the parents. And I'll just bring that up because there are people when they were doing bad, people were trying to bring that up. I'm like, look. Oh, some dumbass and, put that and, out and, on Twitter and I laugh. And let, let's let's just stop with that there because I mean there's we know Andy, Andy's the goat. I mean, we know what's up when he we yeah. know what he's doing. Yeah. And I think they really got their swagger back. I mean, but hey man, that pass by Mahomes to Daryl Williams. So. Oh. Uh, bro, that, that was, was vintage, crazy. Mahomes. Bro, I was looking at I was like, you gotta be kidding me, bro. Oh, man, I mean, <laughs> sorry, I need to come down. I was looking at this game, man. I was like, that was, the toe, was that was the toe drag swag we talked about last year. Remember when he mm -hmm. drug his toe? That was mm -hmm. almost basically, the exact same yeah. Thing. He but he kept thing is he kept his foot behind him. Like, I don't even yeah. know how he did, bro. So he I was kind of like, and then he threw that oh, pass well, left handed. Mm -hmm. He threw that left handed pass tonight. That was a that was another amazing play that he had. I mean, mm -hmm. another ball that it's like something he hasn't done pretty much. In the last six weeks, he didn't even look like the same guy. And then all mm -hmm. of a sudden, he just came out of nowhere. He looked like completely different. He looked like he and used to this, look. The Chiefs are now six and four and have the number one. Well, have they, they're they fourth in the AFC, but they have, they're the number one in the AFC West, bro. If we can just win our next, I think, six or seven. Six no, games. Six, five or six divisional games, bro, we can lock up that. All we need is going to the plus, and we can theoretically still win. Dude, we can theoretically like still Think about mm -hmm. it like this. If we win the next six games, okay, mm -hmm. and this is not unheard of. We, we we won out before. So we went 12 and four after going six and four. So this is not going to be unheard of. If we win out right now, tell me how many other teams in this league, in the AFC right now, that can actually win out. I just don't think we can still get the number one seed. because uh, We still our, have an option. We have a, we have a good chance. I just don't think it's possible. I think we're still going to play in that first week regardless, since there's only one buy. Well, if there's – but you know what? That that season – was it 12 – My I remember my uncle specifically saying, you're out of your mind. There's no possibility that the Chiefs can get the number one seed because we had already lost. We were six and four, and the Patriots were killing it at the time. And that was oh, the year yeah. that mm -hmm. you and I talked about it. Yeah. And I said, they absolutely can get the number one seed. How? I said, if they went out and the Patriots lose a couple of games, we get the number one seed. Mm. It just takes this, that, and the other. And I, I gave him the explanation of how it could work. It fell in that place, and we got the number one seed. The Patriots and I think we can us still, at home. And I think we can still do it. Excuse me. I think we can still do it. It's just going to be interesting to see what happens. But, hey, all I know is my team can most likely make the playoffs, and that's what I'm happy oh, about dude, right We're now. making the playoffs. I ain't taking – I am not – there is absolutely no way. The only way we're not making the playoffs is if we forfeit every, if somebody like, it, it, there's no way we can't make the playoffs right now. If everything stays going the way it does right now, 
with the players mm-hmm. that we have, we're making the playoffs. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly, looking at our schedule, who we got coming up, it's going to be very tough for those teams to beat us. I mean, well, Dallas- yeah, and, let, let, and let's pull up the schedule real quick too, because I think we, and we're, we're look, looking a little bit ahead, but we can also kind of like talk about the Cowboys game, but looking ahead at the schedule, we have the Cowboys. Then we have the week of Thanksgiving off. Then we play the Broncos, the Raiders, Chargers, Steelers, Bengals, Broncos. That's winnable. That is winnable. Those Every next one of those one games. Two, those games are winnable. The hardest game I think is honestly going to be might be the Cowboys or it's going to be the Chargers at, at at their home. So I, but I think every, every one of these games are winnable. I really do. Chargers, you know what? The Chargers, though, here's what I see with the Chargers. They played us when our defense was down, and actually our offense wasn't was 100% clicking. It was Fumbles starting to everywhere. falter that day. So they're not. That's not going to be the team they're playing next. Whether and we always for some reason I don't know why we talked about this before. We play so much better on the road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we do we do we hey, and, that might be, and that might be the thing coming into the future would be like look going well if we play road games i mean it could be help us but i think this team has hit a new stride man it has I it has i think this team has hit a and stride you know, going back to something you said about Andy reed and i gotta bring this up okay and that's the last i'll say about it somebody put out on twitter that it was because of his son last year is the reason why this team has fallen to shit this year that is probably the most ignorant statement that anyone can ever make first of all i mean i've seen some ignorant shit on twitter don't get me wrong i've seen some really dumb things put out on twitter but that statement right there has absolutely zero to do with what happened to us this year if anybody had an inkling of of football knowledge they would know that that had absolutely nothing to do with it Mm -hmm. but to put some kind of bullshit out like that when it's you know, basically almost a year passed and really it hasn't even been brought up by anybody. Nobody's bringing it up. His son's not even really facing anything so far. He hasn't even seen any time and he's probably not going to at this, at this juncture for a long time. Anyway, I don't know what's going to come of it. I've heard some things, but at this point, it's not really even a matter of his son or anything else. It has nothing to do with that. It's a bunch of other little things that has gone on. A new offensive line. Patrick has life being turned upside down. A, an internal issue that is now being fixed. Andy not Andy actually getting sick. There's been so many other little things that caused this to happen. It has absolutely nothing to do with Andy Reid's son. So everybody that thinks that or that follows that bullshit, get off the train because it's stupid. Now, moving forward, let's all talk about good stuff. 41 to 14. 41, now, 41 points. I never thought I would see the Chiefs put up 40 in a long while. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm not going to lie with you. Hey, well, you, we both predicted a weird number. I think I said I said they would win by 10. Yeah. I said by 10. And they yeah. almost won by 30. Yeah. And, yeah, they almost won by 30. <laughs> yeah. And that's crazy. I mean, I think you said originally 30. What did you say? 31 I said I gave him a 10 point. I said like a 24 to 14 or 27. No, you said 28. You said 28, 17 is what you said. No, I gave him a 10 point. I I gave him even 10 point spread. I said 24 to 14 because I didn't think the offense was going to. Yeah, I think you gave him like a 31 to 21 or 30. Yeah, you said 31, 14 with a garbage time touchdown to make it 21. Yeah, and they almost got a garbage time, but they got called back. Yeah, that was funny. Um, But yeah, that's right. And then. Uh, actually, Thiz called me and he goes, "Holy crap, dude!" And I said, "What?" And he goes, "If it wasn't for that extra touchdown, you'd have been pretty close on your call." And I said, "Yeah." I said, and it was weird because honestly, I said I didn't know. I had a good feeling about the game, but I didn't know if they were going to be able to score more than thirty right now, given the fact that they were just coming into what was coming. You know, because I knew what was coming, but mm-hmm. I didn't know how it was going to happen. You know, the first week back, but or into this thing that was coming mm-hmm. i should say and um he uh he goes well you should have stuck with your first one because i originally said i was hoping i you know they'd score over 30 i said but i'm not going to do that right now and because you know mm-hmm. i don't know i mean i don't know because the way they're looking yeah and he said well you should have stuck with it and i said well because i think i originally said 34 17 or something crazy or 31 17 mm-hmm. but um i don't know man i'm just happy they won and i'm happy they put it up with dominance and with swagger and prove that they are the team to beat in this league yep 
Mm-hmm. Period. End of story. I mean, they are the team to beat. Um, let's get into one thing. Um, I do want to bring this up because it's kind of shitty. Not on our team at all. It has nothing to do with us. We talk about this sometimes, and I know it's, you know, it's you never put the game in the hands of the officiating, and I understand that. But this has become a nightmare for every team. It has. It has. I would agree. This crap of these certain crews is costing teams games. I mean, today there was a call in the Saints game for roughing the passer. He was barely touched. I've seen it three times since Mahomes got hit below the knees and the guy hit in the face. Mm-hmm. Okay, that call against Mahomes was never called. He was never fined. There was never a flag thrown. But then you see three after that where he, a quarterback gets brushed, doesn't fall down, doesn't even take a half a step backwards, and mm-hmm. it's roughing the passer. This has got to stop at some point. In a, mm-hmm. New York has to step in and fix this problem. They're hampering the defenses. They're costing. And then one guy says, well, he, he emailed me back. He says, well, I don't know if the NFL can stop interceptions and um, fumbles. If, or the, if the officials are causing in, uh, fumbles and interceptions. And I said, here's the difference, though. I said, teams can come back at any point during a game from an interception. They can come back. They can make that up. They can make up a fumble. They can't make up a bad call on a referee. They can't make up three or four or five bad calls from a referee. They just can't make that up. Because once the call's done, it's done. You can't just turn around and fix it. And if a ref continues to do that over and over and over again through the course of 60 minutes, you're screwed. You just don't have a chance. And especially if it's a one-sided call against one team. And it, it, it's, it's becoming a nuisance. It's becoming tiring. The NFL has to step in and do something about this. I mean, even there was a lot of guys, even that, what's his name, that retired, um, oh, uh, the retired official that always, you know, is always during the game. Gene he, Salvatore? Yeah, Gene Salvatore. He even said, he goes, that was not roughing the passer. He goes, I don't know what they seen, but that definitely mm-hmm. was not roughing the passer in that Saints game. So but, this is what I have to say to that, JP. No, as man. much as I want them to change it, the only way they will actually change something is if fans boycott the games and they don't watch and the players boycott as well. That's the only way the Chiefs are going. I mean, that's the only way the info is going to change these calls because they need to be reviewed. They have our attention every week, though. That's the thing. And I have called it. You've called it. You said even Kurt Warner has proposed this on the board. Yes. Is that – Referees should have post game interviews just like the players and should yeah. be able to answer why they did certain calls. Yeah. They need to put, put on the put on the same fire. It seems we're in a sports realm where the refs are being put above the players when yeah. action needs to be the other way around. Actually, well, more on an even playing field because obviously they got there, they know what they're doing. But we've had certain officials, certain referee crews, it's very inconsistent and mm-hmm. it's very hard. And I know it's hard to do these jobs, but some of the blatant stuff. Is very frustrating. And what I think they need to do is have someone watching in New York needs to oversee these calls and make overturn sure. Overturn them if it's bad. Or overturn turn them. Yeah. Because we saw, yeah, overturn them. And we've seen this happen so many different times. So I really think that something will have to be changed moving forward. Because, like, like this night, yeah, the Chiefs dominated. But, man, our defensive line could not get to car because they were holding our guys. I mean, Constantly. literally holding them. And it was ridiculous because you're like, uh, hello, did you not just see that? Yeah, and it was just weird, weird stuff. But hey, man, all Jones gets says, held on every in every game. Jones yeah, he gets, gets held, held every than, game, yeah, every and game. It was super obvious, and yeah. I was just like, This makes no sense. Yeah, but this is what I took from it. Our team, especially the defensive line, did not give up, they continued to fight, they continued well, to fight, Reed. and they got to Derek Carr, and then Derek Carr started throwing punts and stuff, and then the yep. Chiefs got interceptions. How about Jaron Reed? Everybody was punking him and saying he's I know. Sucked. Everyone was saying he was terrible. Hey, Jaron Reed showed up. Frank Clark showed up, bro. I think this defense is it's prepared to make that help, turn man. soon. How many times have we said this, dude? It's all about help. Look, damn freaking shit. How many times do we have to say this? I get so tired of people sitting here cutting down one player when they don't have help with the rest of the players. People cut down Chris Jones. Then they cut down this guy, Chris Jones. I mean, for, you know, why are we paying him all this money? If you can't do this, that same guy deleted his tweet and Chris Jones got a sack. Then it was, oh, Chris Jones was lights out. Oh, well, Jaron Reed sucks. 
it's not